In this video, we'll be installing um, dual halos and demonize onto our BK Moto 308 projectors. Um, this is your smaller halo ring that goes to the front. This will be the larger halo ring that goes over the projector and the red demonize. <clears throat> I'll be doing this one step at a time so if you don't have all these halos and demonize and you only have the smaller halos or the dual halos smaller and larger you can still use this guide uh, to install the rings correctly. First thing we want to do is remove the shroud from the projector body. Unscrew the four screws in the back and the projector ball will come off. The big hole at the top is where you will be pulling the wires through. This would also be the 12 o'clock of the projector. This is the top, the top part where the bigger hole is. When installing the projectors into the headlight, you always want to make sure this is facing up at 12 o'clock. First thing you want to do is bend these heat shrinks 90 degrees up. They would, they would bend much easier if you heat them up a little bit. Um, you can use a hair dryer on this um, or if you have a heat gun you can use that. Um, but a hair dryer will work just fine. do is just bend them. Ninety degrees. And do this to the rest of the rings. I usually start from the smaller halo that goes to the front of the shroud. Take the wires and fish them through the big hole at the top.
press in the ring just to make sure it fits properly. You will need to apply silicone glue to the corners of the shroud just like this. All around, right in the corner. Don't put too much <clears throat> too much glue. You want it to be nice and clean. just like this right in the corner and just press in the ring and that's it let it dry and you're all set if you only have regular single halos um, you are done at this point. Just mount everything back together. When mounting everything, look at the back of the shroud. It will say top. So make sure the top portion is in the same position where the gap is. So when you mount this back together, you want the white wires from the halos to be together with the top, just like this. This is the proper position. Not upside down, like this, but you want the top to be in the same place where the halo wires are. Like this. Next thing I usually do, next thing we'll do is install the demon eyes inside the projector. When installing these, you have these three points, which and you want to place the ring in between the three posts. When placing the ring, test fit it first and make sure this post this post is right here in, in, in between the gap. Just like this. You can see the post over there in between the gap. And the ring fits nice and flush. After test fitting, put down silicone glue on this white part all around. Again, don't put too much glue. You can see the silicone 
take the ring, place it in the same way. And press it into the silicone. And also let it dry for about 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours. Next step is we'll be doing the bigger halo ring over the projector. Now I'm doing this all in one shot. Um, you might want to let these two dry a little bit for a couple of hours um, because you don't want you don't want to pull on one of the wires by mistake and have the ring come off while the glue is still it's still not dry. Um, it takes some practice um, to be able to do all three rings in one shot. So you can pretty much do the smaller one in the front and then demonize it together, let it dry for a couple of hours, and then, then do the bigger one. <clears throat> to install the bigger ring, we're going to place it over the shroud, just like this, and align the gaps in the same 12 o'clock position just like this don't place the ring all the way to the back um, you want it pretty much at the edge of the shroud like this next step you want to secure the ring with electrical tape so it doesn't move around while you're gluing it and it dries properly. Also, try not, not to hold the chrome with your bare hands and wear gloves. Um, you don't want to leave fingerprints all over this, um, which are hard to clean later. So as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to avoid holding the shroud with my hand. See, the ring is nice. Straighten out the ring. Make sure it's all level. Just like this. Then turn it over and we'll be applying the silicone only to these big these big parts in the back. So over here, over here, on this one, and this one. And also a little bit over here. Since this this one is pretty far away. All you want to do is apply some silicone right in the back. Don't put too much. This is plenty and you can't see it from the front.
a little bit over here behind the small little posts. And one last spot. Right here. And you are done. So essentially, you put the glue behind this hump, this one this one, this one, and over here behind the small one since this one is so far away just like this and it's nice and clean and you can't see the silicone while looking at it from the front Let this, let everything dry for at least 12 hours and then mount, mount the bowl back onto the shroud and like I said earlier, Make sure that when you mount it, all the halo wires are on top, and the part that says top is going together with all the white halo wires. And then just secure the four screws back in, and you are done. Now do the same thing to the other projector. And after everything dries, you'll be ready to mount it into your bike. Now I will show you how to install Demoni rings into the projectors. This is fairly straightforward. First thing you want to do is bend these ends so they face up 90 degrees. Um, it's pretty tough to bend them because they're cold. This is heat, sh heat shrink. So you can take a hair dryer or a heat gun. Uh, but it also can be done with a hair dryer and simply you warm it up a little bit um, it doesn't have to get very hot just just warm enough to pick to become to become pliable again and then you simply bend them they need to be about 80 degrees or so it doesn't have to be exact, you'll see it when you place the ring. <clears throat> the ring is ready. We want to take the front part of the projector off from the projector bowl. It's being held together by four screws right here. Just undo the screws.
just undo the screws and the projector comes apart. So this particular projector has the little spacers. Um, this is a slightly, slightly older model that has the, these spacers. Um, the, our newer projectors do not come with the spacers because the spacer is already built in to the plastic mold. So it uh, makes life a little easier. Um, you don't have to put these back in since we incorporated the spacing already into the mold of this part. So this disregard the spacers, you're not gonna have them on the on our new models. Now all you have to do is place the ring just like this into the projector. and then put the clear silicone around it. You can put some some electrical tape on the ring so it stays in place while it's drying. Just don't try to not try not touching the glass um, otherwise you have to wipe off the fingerprints later. All you do is just fill in the gap with the silicone. Clean and easy. And the other side. And that's it. The ring is secure in there. Uh, once it dries, it's not going nowhere. <clears throat> Let the ring dry before you put the projector back together. <clears throat> Otherwise, you might you know, pull in the wire and have it come out and the silicone is gonna get on the lens and um, you don't want to be you don't want to be removing silicone from the lens so try to avoid avoid that to put the projector back together just put a just screw back in screw back in the four screws and you're done in this case, I have to put the spacers back on, but you don't have to worry about that. This is the cutoff shield, by the way. This creates the cutoff line, and this makes the high beams. Low beam, high beam. Low beam, high beam. Low beam, high beam. this back and secure the screws.
usually do the final tightening by hand, so I can feel the torque. And you're done. But you know, just man, just let let the ring dry first before you put the projector back together. First thing we need to do is glue the halos onto the shrouds. You will need to find which which part of the shroud is 12 o'clock so you can properly position the halo rings if you turn the shroud over you will see four mounting points two further apart and two closer together the two mounting points that are closer together are the top part of the shroud in between them you will have this, this hump this part this is your 12 o'clock so when the projector is mounted properly in the headlight this will be facing up closer together further apart so this is the middle this is up at 12 o'clock. Try to wear rubber gloves so you won't leave fingerprints all over this chrome which doesn't come off easily later. <clears throat> the way you want to position the halos is first find the 12 o'clock then one of the halos goes at 1 o'clock and the other shroud goes at 11 o'clock like this this way when you mount this into the headlight the headlight would be blocking the wires and the gap would not be visible so let's start This is the top part. We want to fish the wires through these gaps. You can use a small small screwdriver to help out pushing the wires in. This is the top part. This is our 11 o'clock. This is how you want the halo positioned. The other the second shroud, the halo would be positioned this way. <clears throat> Next step is we're going to put down glue on this on top of this lip the halo would be placed right on top of this lip not stretched over it but right on top
put an even amount of glue don't don't put too much glue um, otherwise it's gonna be messy this is this is plenty of glue next step is simply press in the ring You press, press in the ring, make sure it's positioned correctly and evenly on the shroud, like this. And then grab some electrical tape and tape it in a couple of spots so it stays in place. Let this dry for about 12 to 24 hours and then you'll be ready to put this onto the projector. We have successfully installed our first halo ring and if you are getting the dual halos you would receive a second bigger CCFL ring which you will install behind the first one simply place the ring over the shroud like this make sure the wires on the same position like the first ring you want to space the second ring just at the edge of the shroud like this make sure it's it's even and straight Take some tape and secure the shroud so it doesn't move around on you. Once you secure the ring, you can glue it in place. You only need to put the glue You only need to put the glue on these big behind behind these big humps. Right there. Right behind. Then skip the small one and then go to the next big one. Right behind. Skip the small one. Go to the next big one. Right here. See, you can't see the glue from the front, but it's on the back. Don't use too much glue, 
just enough to fill the gap to fill the gap between the shroud and the ring And the last piece over here, this point is too far from the end, so we'll want to put the glue over here. And you're done. This is how you glue dual halos onto our BK Moto projectors. Notice this is the 12 o'clock hump part of the shroud. These are positioned at 11 o'clock. The second shroud you will be doing you will position the gaps and the wires over here at 1 o'clock and just follow the same steps as we did here and now we'll be installing <clears throat> BK Moto Audi style LED strips into the lenses uh, we have two varieties of LED strips. Uh, the first model is our flexible model LED strip. It is a thicker LED LED strip. It does not have any adhesive on it. So you will need to use clear silicone, uh, which could be purchased together with your kit, um, to glue down the LED strip. This LED strip can be cut with scissors um, in groups of three LEDs. So basically all you have to do is when you get the strip, place it against the headlight with this a bit the surface where you'll be mounting it. Uh, I'm just measuring it on the outside. We're actually going to mount it on the inside of the headlight uh, behind the lens. Uh, but as you can see this is already uh, perfectly sized for this mounting location, but if you just want the LED strip let's say just across the top, um, then obviously we need to cut cut off some LEDs. Um, in this case we need to cut off three LEDs to fit it across the top. Um, so we just use scissors and cut groups of three LEDs to the size that you want. Um, <clears throat> To mount this, this LED strip, you will basically make sure you wear rubber gloves not, and do not touch the lens on the inside with your fingers. You will leave fingerprints and they are a pain to get off, to clean off. Um, so basically you would place the strip with the LEDs facing forward into the lens. Then make the bend. With the strip, just like this. Then I would recommend taping it in about two spots where the bend is uh, with electrical tape. So simply tape it down with electrical tape so it stays in place, and then you apply clear silicone right behind the strip while the strip is already placed you just apply clear silicone behind it around the strip and let it dry for 24 hours and here you can see how the strip looks like one, once it's placed 
Uh, this type of strip, it's a little, it's thick, so you can you can see it when even when it's off, um, and it offers a good amount of LEDs on the strip. Then we have our second model of LEDs, which is this is our newest X2 um, side emitting LED strips. They are very very slim. Uh, about two millimeters thick and they have a very good amount of LEDs on them about the same amount as the flexible model and the brightness is also the same um, this type of LED strip is very discreet uh, because it's so thin once you install it into the headlight uh, you can barely tell that it's there until you actually turn it on and these LED strip strips also have 3M, 3M adhesive on the back so basically they're uh, very easy to install simply peel off the double sided tape peel off the tape on the back and stick the LED strip behind, facing forward behind the clear lens um, with this type of LED strip um, they are side emitting, so they emit, the, shine the light forward. Um, you have to turn on the LED strip to see which way they shine. Because once you install it, you don't want the LEDs to shine into the headlight. You want them to shine out of the headlight. Uh, to, turn, to just test this, it takes two seconds. Um, just take the power lead um, and connect the red wire to your plus on the battery, black to minus, and the LED strip will come on. And then you can see which way it shines. Now this LED strip can also be cut, um, as you can see, this is, it's, it's a little too long for this particular headlight, and you have specifically marked locations. At every three LEDs, there's, there's a picture of scissors, and this is the location where you can cut the LED strip with scissors. So again, simply place it against your desired area where you want the strip to be and you can see the closest scissor location is here so we'll simply cut the LED strip in this location I can toss this away and now you have the right the correct length to install so to install the strip it's very straightforward. Simply place the LED strip right against the lens um, across this on this lip right here with the LEDs facing forward into the lens. So after you tested which way the LEDs shine um, you face you uh, place them facing forward. So simply peel peel off the double sided tape and stick the LED strip. So Simply continue sticking the LED strip facing forward right behind the lens, right against the lens. And be careful not to touch the clear lens with your fingers.
And now the strip is installed and as you can see from the front you can't really tell almost can't tell that it's there uh, but you will see it when it's on and it's very bright now also um, I recommend um, to reinforce the glue um, the glue is pretty good on these strips um, the tape um, but you, you still want to reinforce it a little bit um, what I what I use is um, crazy glue and this is the type with the brush um, you want the type with the brush because it's a lot more precise and easier to apply and I just basically what I do is I, I lift up the LED strip in a few spots like in the beginning and the middle next to the bend that's where they like to get unglued and at the tip all the way at the end so basically what I do is I pick up the LED strip a little bit and I just put a little tiny dab of crazy glue right under the strip and then I hold it on my finger uh, for like a minute until it dries now be extremely extremely careful with crazy glue um, do not get any on your lens if you get any smudges on the lens, you'll never get them off. Don't even try it, you'll just smudge it worse. Uh, but if you'll be careful, um, the bond is very strong and holds the strip very well. And I like to do this as a precaution. Uh, so the LED strip would, would never get unglued in a spot and then you have to open up the headlights again. again. And that's pretty much how we install LED strips. Um, you can be creative with the locations. I mean, the usual location is across the bottom. Um, you can run them across the top. Um, you can run them just on the outside edges. Um, basically, you can cut them to any size. Um, if you if you want to do the wings effect, where you have a triangle type of effect here in the corners, basically the corner like this, um, you would need to buy two sets of LED strips from us which will be four pieces um, and do one short piece across the top as far out as you want and then one short piece across the bottom um, you can't make such a sharp bend with LED strips with one piece so you would want a four piece um, set and then just simply glue them in the uh, two piece one across the top one across the bottom or you can do a perimeter LEDs, which is also a four-piece set where you glue one strip across the top and one strip across the bottom and you have LEDs all around the headlight. So you can get creative with this. And that's it, we are done. Next step, we'll be putting the headlight back together.
these are the reflectors for a 2006 through 2013 Yamaha R6 they need to be slightly modified to accept our BK Moto uh, by Xenon projectors and halos this is the left reflector you can see by the L on this reflector this piece needs to be shaved off as you can see it's sticking out and it will interfere with the mounting of the projector so this is this piece you'll be cutting off like this it's pretty simple to do with the Dremel and on the back of the reflector you will want to cut off these posts and these these are the posts that hold the hardware that that holds the original light bulbs which you no longer need but then inter they interfere with mounting the projector as well so these these posts we're gonna cut off on the right side reflector nothing needs to be modified and only on the back you will need to cut off the same posts these these posts need, need to come off just make them flush with the with this opening so cut them flush according to this this opening right here and we will also drill a hole right here and this is to bring out the wires there that are coming out from the projector two wires will come through here and the demon eyes and the high low beam controller wires will come out through here and same thing on this reflector we'll be drilling a hole right here to make the cuts we'll be using a simple dremel with a cutting bit this is this is to cut this piece off this cutting bit is the most convenient way to do it and to drill the holes in the back you can also use this bit then to cut off the posts we'll be using a bolt cutter bit and it's, it's very easy cut off the posts with the bolt cutting bit use proper safety equipment breathing mask and safety goggles and be careful with the Dremel let's start
All the reflectors are trimmed and cut. These are all the modifications you need to do to them. Now I'll just wash off, wash this off. Um, wash them real good and let them dry and they'll be ready for painting. Um, if you're blacking out your reflectors uh, we will show this in the next step. If not just wash them and you can mount the projectors. Now we are ready to paint the reflectors. Uh, this would black out the reflectors for a nicer, uh, for a better headlight look. Um, the paint they recommend is Rust-Oleum High Heat. Uh, there's a picture of a radiator grill. Um, this is the paint uh, that we use most of the time. It's very easy to apply. It sticks well and it can sustain high temperatures. You can get this in Home Depot, um, Lowe's, and I believe Walmart also carries this paint. So just lose, look for this exact spray paint. Uh, this is just a handle that I added to the can, to the spray paint can. It doesn't come with it. Um, this is just so it's easier to spray. Um, you can get this handle um, also in Home Depot or Lowe's. All you have to do is paint the reflector with a couple of a few coats, two three coats is enough. Um, there's no need to sand down the reflector. This paint would stick just fine onto the reflective surface. Just make sure it's warm enough outside or wherever you're painting. Um, I find it that this paint sticks better in temperatures over about 60 70 degrees um, so it should be a warm day when you're painting it or paint somewhere where, where it's not cold so just shake the can hold the can about six to ten inches away and spray. Spray right on the reflector. Put down a thin coat in the beginning. Put down a thin coat and let it dry for a couple of minutes, maybe three, three, three to five minutes or so. Um, you can actually start doing the second reflector while the first one is drying a little bit. Try not to breathe this stuff, it's not good for you. So usually I recommend spraying outside. This one's not shiny anymore, so it, it dried a little bit. Once it becomes a matte finish, it means it's kind of it, it dried a little bit, so you can put a second coat. And I usually put a, a, a thick second coat.
check to make sure you covered everything evenly. This reflector is ready. Now when this paint dries it won't be this shiny. It's going to be a nice matte finish. And do the second reflector. And you're done. Reflectors are painted. Check, some, check to make sure you got all, all the spots. And there's no more silver showing. It's very important to let the paint dry properly because it releases fumes that will fog up um, the lenses, the clear lenses and the headlights. Um, let this paint dry for at least 48 hours in a warm and dry location. Um, I recommend about 2-3 days for proper, proper drying. Um, after a couple hours you can touch it, um, but it won't be fully dry. So before you seal the headlights, let make sure you let the paint properly dry. And that's it. Once it dries, you're ready to mount uh, the BK motor projectors.